Reef DVM's coming at you with how to replace the septic pump. Um, five o'clock in the morning, one of our tank alarms went off and it wasn't sounding so good. And we found out that the uh, pump had died in the third chamber of our mound system. So we bought ourselves a submersible uh, pump um, from Myers and we got ourselves another tank alarm because I'm going to replace um, that older one that wasn't you know holding up as well. Um, the pump that's in there right now is uh, a Gold's and it's been in there for about 11 years and it's worked really good. Um, I wasn't able to find one of those at the local stores. I was able to find a nice Myers pump. It's a nice cast iron pump. Uh, comes with a, you know a, a float switch in it just like uh, the one that's in there right now. It's the same hos horsepower and the same head height so um, it'll pretty much be uh, plug and play. It's It comes with the um, float attached to the pump itself, but I'm actually going to put it back up on the tube a little higher. You'll see that when I take it out. This is kind of a one-day project. It, it took the better part of a morning and a little bit of the afternoon to get this thing wired up, um, but it certainly went okay. Um, the first thing I'd recommend do is kill the power and um, get access to where the um, pump plugs in, which for us, the power is at a breaker box in the house, and the pump plugs in right out at a little electrical box um, out here just on top of the um, third tank. Once I got the power off and um, it unplugged, as a matter of pulling the rock away and you know opening up the uh, tank, um, the access point here to these wires, it's a little bit tight in this box. You may have more room. We didn't have a lot of room. So I'm gonna actually use um, a wire and string to kind of get the wires pulled through. When I opened it up, this is what I saw. Uh, basically the pump is at the end of that PVC pipe and that PVC pipe comes up, turns 90 degrees and goes out to my mound. They didn't even give me a junction. Um, that was kind of disappointing. But regardless, we were able to work with it. I had to cut the pipe and leave enough PVC in each part so that I could put a coupler in there. And I'm gonna use a threaded uh, coupler so that I can take it apart in the future. Then I tied some yellow string to the wires so that when I pull them through, I'll have the string in there so that I can pull the new cords back up. Um, just trying to think of in advance. Um, I'm gonna take the cords that are existing and like I said pull them through and then that'll leave the string that I'll use to pull the new ones back up and in. You really should never lift your pump also by the electrical cords but again the pump that's in here is dead and there is a ring down on this pump which I did find out once I got it up but they didn't leave a cord to actually lift the pump either. So you know it's what it is, but when these guys installed this mound 11 years ago on the farm, um, they just they cut a few corners. I wish they had given me a, a disconnect, and I wish they had hooked a, a cord to the pump down there at the bottom. On a side note, I guess I should just be happy that we've got a good septic, and, it, and it's working well for the last 11 years. Having a pump go at this point in time is, is pretty typical, I'm told. And, uh, you know, it, it can be an expensive process to fix, but... You know, I bought about a $500 pump here on my own, and uh, I'm putting it out on my own, so um, hopefully I can save a few bucks. Getting this wire out was a little bit of a tricky challenge because the uh, plug ends didn't really want to feed through that 90 degree corner that's down there, um, but eventually I did get it out. Um, to work with this, I did have to kind of lay on my stomach and reach down to these things. That was a little discomforting, but, you know, it's kind of the process. Never did I climb into this tank, folks. I didn't want to risk anything. Um, I always had uh, my family here to help me in case I needed it. So here I am. I've got the um, the cords uh, that I need to work with. And I'm going to pull this thing up. And I'm going to get it out of here, get it cleaned up, and then put it back in. This particular system has two floats on it, um, a high float and a middle float. But they both trip the same alarm. Um, it's just kind of redundancy. And then, like I said, at the bottom, it has a float for the pump, which is sitting about, oh, I'd say about a foot above the pump. So the pump never completely empties this tank. Just going to lift it up here by the cords. I know this is not the healthiest on the cords, but again, the, the this system here is, is currently shot, so we're not worried about it. Um, they should have had a rope attached to the ring on the top of the pump that I could grab and, and do it that way. 
So you can see it's kind of dirty. It's a messy job. You know, this is where all the sewage of the farm goes down into. Um, some people may ask why we're leaving the float a little bit higher um, and leaving a little bit more fluid in this third chamber. Um, one of the reasons um, that I was told that you need to do that is in Minnesota it gets very cold and you don't ever want the um, water in this chamber to freeze. And if it's deep enough, the antimicrobial growth can continue to produce enough heat where it won't freeze. So the recommendation was to keep at least 12 inches of water in this tank at any given time so we don't pump it all the way down. The other thing obviously is if there is any you know debris that gets into this third chamber because it's supposed to be mostly just liquid and bacterial matter um, it wouldn't get into your pump. So here's the old pump this is the blue golds. Um, a good pump for us for 11 years almost um, but didn't hold up. You can see the metal handle where they should have had a rope attached to it but um, basically I got the Rottenberg wrench out here and get the pipe screwed off it. I'm going to reuse that whole setup um, except for I'm going to add um, uh, a new set of floats and I'm going to add a quick coupler on it and I'm going to actually replace the alarm I have for this particular mount system in the garage so with a new one just because I figure I'm not going to touch this for 10 years and that alarm has to work for me. I'm going to use uh, you know a two-part uh, PVC um, industrial strength uh, to glue this um, new fitting on and again I went with a slip slip but it's a threaded union in between so in the future I'll be able to just unthread it grab the rope um, take the cords out of the outlet and pull this whole thing up and I won't have to cut the pipe like I did this time I'd highly recommend you do that folks if you can when somebody's putting in your system have it install it right away when they put it in um, I get that it might cost a little bit more to have them put a union in, but certainly save you time down the road. Once you get this done, certainly follow the manufacturer specs on your PVC cement. Mine and this industrial strength version says that you got to wait till um, 20 minutes before you can put pressure on it. I did um, use um, the two-part system on this because I wanted to work really well. I know I didn't show it, but I, I did both parts on each each piece of the PVC. And then when I stuck it together, I gave it a little bit of a twist to make sure I get a really good bond in there. And then you just kind of got to hold it because as that PVC glue works, it sometimes tries to uh, push out the uh, uh, piece of PVC from the fitting. Just clean out the inside a little bit so I don't get any any residue in that o-ring and this is only one side I wasn't able to film it because you know my body and my head were in the way but I did the same thing on the piece of pipe that's in the hole too then I go down to the other end and I had to put a coupler on this one the Myers pump is I think an inch and a half this particular piece of PVC I think was two inches so I had to put a metal coupler to reduce it down um, when you do that, uh, make sure you put like, you know, um, uh, like a Teflon tape or a, a plumber's uh, pipe putty on the inside just to make sure this seals up good. Oh, you guys may also note that you're not seeing a check valve in the system. In Minnesota, in my area, it's code to not put in a check valve. A check valve, when the pump would turn on, the pump would shoot the water up this pipe, whatever height it is, and then over to the mound, and the check valve would stop the water from coming back into your tank. The problem with that is in Minnesota is the head height, as it goes up into the top to go across to the mound, it could freeze, and that water inside could crack your pipe. So in Minnesota, we tend to not put check valves in these, so that when the pump is done pumping, the water can just flow back down into the pipe, and the little bit that that runs backwards, um, that empties that high section of the pipe, um, just keeps it from, from freezing solid. So if you're wondering why there's no check valve on this system, you know, check with your local ordinances um, to make sure you get through your inspection properly. I'm told that in a lot of states they don't even need an inspection when they replace a pump. Um, this state's a little bit different, um, at least in my area. So again, I just Tighten this bad boy right down onto the Myers pipe and uh, 
I would like to say it's ready to go in the hole, but again, I'm going to replace the floats, and this has three floats, one for the pump, two for the alarm that are wired together. That way if one fails, um, the other one would kick in and, and notify us. You never want your mound system pump to fail and you not know about it, because if you continue to use water, eventually it could back up the inlet pipe, and if that happens um, on these old farmhouses, which sit about the level of that inlet pipe in your basement, you literally could have sewage backing up in your basement. And I don't know about you folks, but that's just kind of uncool. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to set them kind of where they were. Um, I'm going to have the pump float uh, about 12 inches above the pump, so it never empties down more than 12 inches. Then about 12 inches above that, I'm going to have the first float alarm. And then about 8 inches above that, I'm going to have the second float alarm. And I'm making sure the float alarms are not on top of each other so they can't float into each other as easily when they float up in case that would ever become a, uh, an issue. Um, I'm attaching the pump one with the supplied um, you know, uh, clamp that they gave us. But for the other two floats, I'm just using electrical tape and zip ties to, to, to attach them. There was no other uh, supplied um, uh, clamps for those. And that's the way the other one was on too, and it, it did well for the last 11 years. I run the pipe, uh, run the cord, excuse me, up along the pipe and kind of wrap it around the top um, just so that I can deal with it once I get it in the hole. My head height is, is pretty close to about 9 feet. Um, Everybody's head height and their mount, I'm sure, is probably a little bit different. So whatever your septic height is, just make sure you got an adequate pump for it. So I'm putting back on the uh, floats, and I'm using the old float to mark uh, where it was for the new float. That way I'm making sure i got enough distance and make sure nothing can get tangled in it. This was actually the fairly easy part of the process was setting this up. I had taken some good measurements too from the previous pipe here when I took it out. Um, I was originally going to mark the pipe, but it was so full of septic slime that I couldn't get anything to mark it with, so I ended up just taking some measurements and writing them down. Again, this whole process, I think, cost around 500 bucks. I think the pump alarm and the, the floats. I'm going to say we're about 80 bucks, and I think the pump was around 450 something like that. By the time I get done, I spent about $500 doing this. And hopefully it'll last us you know, at least another 11 years. Our farm is like a lot of farms. Um, you know, you've got you know, multiple wells, and uh, you know, like a lot of the older farms, they had drained a daylight sewer, and now the house is on, like I said, a mountain septic. And then I've actually got um, another... Um, bathroom setup for one of the barns. So when I actually go into the garage and put this in the garage, you'll see two different alarms. Um, one only pertains to, to this setup. But again, it has two floats, so if one float fails, uh, the redundancy is the other float could trip it, which is, I think, a good thing. I'm glad they, they put that in. So here we are just kind of finishing the setup of the floats and making sure we have the, the heights right. Um, I zip tie them on and then, you know, lightly just, I don't want to crush the wires. And then I used black electrical tape to kind of hold everything in place. Again, very similar to what was there, kind of doing more of a, a duplication than anything. I highly recommend two people to put this back into the hole. Um, I was doing this with my kids, so, you know, pretty much just me, but two people makes it a lot easier to set this thing down into the hole. It's fairly heavy. Here I'm actually going to tie that rope I was talking about. I'm using um, a very plasticky material um, that we use for fencing that should last a long, long time and not degrade, which is what I want to do. Just tying a real strong knot here to this ring. And I'm going to keep this rope up at the top so that when I need to get access to it in the future, I'll be able to get my hands on it. 
The one thing you want to make sure this rope is, is not in the way of any of your floats. Once you get that good and tight, basically it's just about figuring out how much distance we need. And then I'm going to drop this thing right in. So here we go, we got it back in. I dropped it back in the hole. I'm taking the yellow string and I'm pulling those electrical cords back up and feeding them down as I pull. And then I got the electrical cords back up to the top. Um, and that was the easiest way for me to get through that 90 degree elbow. Then basically I just kind of had to tape up the um, low voltage wires um, from where they connect into the line that comes from the garage, which is where my alarm is, and these new floats. I just want to make sure they're good and sealed up, even though this box is electrical box and it's watertight. And this was the finished product. As you can see my screw-on junction there. I wrapped the extra cable there around that, um, you know, kind of conduit that takes the electrical up and you can see the rope there sticking out. I've got that off to the side. Pretty much we're ready to just fire this thing up and test it. Now it's been about two hours since I, I did the uh, um, PVC cement so it should be plenty dry. So it's just a matter of plugging it in and trying it. In this situation I've got enough water in the bottom I'm just going to plug it in kind of straight on first so I can just try to test the pump and then uh, eventually I plugged it into the floats and let the floats control it. Then it was just a matter of putting the cover back on and heading up to the garage to put the uh, alarm in. And the alarm is simple. It's just a bell wire with red and white. And screw it onto the wall. And then hit the test button. Make sure it screams at me. And we're pretty much good to go. And again, I have two alarms. Remember, I have two different septic systems here. This one that I just installed runs with, with both pumps. That's as simple as it was, folks, for us to put in uh, a new septic pump. So I thank you for watching and please like and subscribe and we'll keep putting out great videos like this.